Okay, if you if you guys lose the chickens, I'm gonna be really upset with you right now. <laughs> okay, we brought the zombie chickens down. All right, the battle's over. Welcome everybody to the Falcon One Shot. I'm your host for the evening, the Birdman, known as Falcon. And this right here is 50 years, which is a really interesting take on turn-based strategy colonial management game. This game is essentially made not to last very long in terms of um, the length of your run. Essentially, there's a couple of turns in the game. As a matter of fact, there's 50 turns ideally in the game. And what you want to do is survive for 50 years. And every single turn is indeed a year, so it's definitely made for a lot of multiple runs, replay value. And it's a game you don't have to really invest too much time in, which is always a plus for me, because, you know, I don't really have too much time these days to really play games and get really in-depth, especially when it comes to hardcore colonial management sim games that last a very, very long time. This is mostly just made for, like, speed playthroughs, I guess. Uh, I think this would be an amazing game as well for, like, a tablet or, you know, like, iOS, Android, whatever. But that's neither here nor there. For now, let's go ahead and check this out. Let's go into new game, and I'll talk more about this as we go forward here. I'm gonna go into normal. This is a very difficult game if you don't plan correctly. You could die very, very fast, and you might have to restart really, really early. As a matter of fact, you'll probably be restarting a lot, but still. Uh, when you first start off, you have a chance to choose what kind of nation you want to lead. Uh, we have the Americans, who, and each nation, by the way, has a different um, bonus to them as well. Americans apparently get an extra 100 gold per turn. Uh, our national debt would probably um, not coincide with that, but that's that's just me, I guess. Uh, British um, nation gives you each forest or hut gives plus ten wood. <laughs> oh, the British people know what's up. And plus ten fate per year. Okay, we have the Greeks who building a maze will grant a free minotaur. Building a pond will grant a free hydra. Mazes and ponds don't require other buildings. That's pretty cool. These are essentially going to be like combat units: the hydra and the minotaur. Russians give you sell first so they don't build lumber mills. Forests or huts give 100 gold per turn. I'm gonna just go ahead and speed through these so you guys get an idea feel what it is. We have the Japanese as well. We have the French. We have the Celts. The Celts? Celts. And we have the Romans as well. And the Byzantines. I think these were added just recently, if I'm right. Alright, so. I've only had experience with the Americans, and it kind of went relatively well for me. The extra gold helped out, so I'm going to go with the Americans here for this one. We'll start game. So, this is essentially where you'll be taking part of your entire game. This screen and also the combat screen, but we'll get into that one pretty soon whenever it pops up. So, at the moment, we're starting off with 100 gold. Or, not 100, but 1100 gold. And we all have one of five food. This tells you exactly how many people you could have in your colony, I guess, without starvation happening. So, you will never be able to have more than five people in your colony if this number does not go up over here, the five anyway. So, let's see. Um, we're at 1100 gold. Let me construct a building here. We could hire swordsmen right off the bat. It's going to cost me 600 for each one. The swordsmen have 30 HP, 5 to 6 damage, and courage, 7. Uh, I think it's really important to have at least one swordsman early on, so I'm going to buy that. Let's go to construct a building. And over here, you'll have a bunch of buildings you could basically build, and all of them have like a different type of um, bonus to them. And some of them will require like a other building to be built before you could actually create it. So for instance, the Minotaur maze requires the cow shed to be made, which is really interesting because, you know, it's a giant bull dude, so... <laughs> <laughs> you have the couch in and initially. I find it to be kind of witty. Anyway, so over here, chicken farm is going to give us plus four food, meaning this five will go up to a nine, and then that means that we could actually harbor up to nine people in my colony as opposed to just five. So a really good addition to have. As a matter of fact, we might open that up soon. Um, this one over here will give you one more food, but it also give you 50 more gold per year. And we already get 200 gold per year with our bonus for the Americans and also just by having one peasant working the mines here every single year. So, I'm going to go ahead and just hire another peasant for now, and now we have 300 gold coming in per year, and that's all we can really do. If we go to scouting, um, this will tell you different events that show up over time, and there'll be like really special like events you could either undertake for extra bonuses, or you could just bypass them together. Um, that's basically the rundown. Let's go into end of the year now, and we have our first attack. The reason why you always want to have a swordsman available is because you'll get attack in the first year it does seem every single time, and if you go up like um, peasant versus peasant over here, um, you have a really good chance of losing. Now, the combat is done automatically, which is one of the things I will talk about that I really don't enjoy about the game. Um, you could also call a peasant to back you up if you feel you can't win, um, but that means they won't work for the year, so you won't get their bonus for, you know, working. So let's go ahead and fight. The fight is done automatically. You have no control over this, and this is where my issue comes into play, because sometimes you'll have, like, a really amazing party set up, and you'll be fighting, like, a relatively 
I guess semi-decent tough opponent, but because the AI pathing is like very automatic, you will sometimes lose a fight even though you should be able to win based on the units in your party against the units uh, from the enemy. And that's all done automatically, so that's where the RNG kind of comes into play. I don't think it's even RNG, it's just mostly just like where the AI decides to walk to or who decides to attack. So that's going to be automatically done and you can't control that. One of the things I don't like too much about it, but I don't think there's also room in the game for you to control each unit individually. Because then it kind of really ruins the entire... Um, fast playthrough of the game if you're taking like single turns every single fight. Uh, over here we have actually unlocked Fate, which is um, given to us once we win fights. And you could also get more Fate for um, creating the church and the monastery. The monastery will let you turn your knights into paladins, which can heal your party members as well. So uh, at the moment we're at 400 gold, and we have three people here. Two peasants, one swordsman. I, I like to unlock as soon as possible, by the way. The archers are very very useful so having wood come in <laughs> it's very important so we need a lumber mill um the lumber mill will actually make it so you get 20 wood for each peasant so you'll sacrifice 20 extra gold from the 100 they make every year for uh 20 extra wood but i think it's a very very useful thing because archers are very good for um fighting from afar so you know what let's go ahead and we need 100 more gold huh so we're gonna have to just sacrifice this here we'll skip for now now we have 700. Let's go over here and construct a lumber mill. So now we're going to have some wood coming in. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot hire anybody else and we have enough money for anything else. So now we just end our year. We're at 460. Now, as you can see, our gold coming in is a lot less now because we're tossing some into the lumber mill now. So I think now what I want to do is hire yet another peasant and we will end our year here. 400 gold and we have a hundred wood. Is that enough for the shooting ground? It is. So now we can unlock the shooting ground. We have access to the archers. Before you could hire them, luckily for us, the the archers only cost wood. <laughs> Gotta stop. Uh, they only cost wood to hire, so you don't have to sacrifice gold for them. Um, but that being said, we still need to get 200 wood for, in order to get that happening. So you know what? Um, we also need to increase our amount of people in the field but for now i think we need more workers so let me get another peasant for now and now we have met our quota for the colony five of five let's end our year we're being attacked uh, again early on as long as you have a swordsman you should be able to f be able to do well just fighting the peasants that attack here okay so we're very close so kind of close to unlocking this guy now the problem is we need to open up our capacity for more people here. So let's go to construct building. And I think now we have to open up the chicken farm. Actually, we have to wait another year for that. Yeah. So instead, well, we could hire, or oh, we can't. We're at five of five. We end our year. So we fight over here really quickly and you should be no problem. Soon enough, we'll have more um, stronger enemies attacking us. So we have to be ready for that. Um, alrighty, so now that we've done that, let's go over to construct a building, get the chicken farm, and now we have four more people available to us. Next year, we'll be able to get an archer and very close to another extra peasant, too. So for now, we just end year. Hmm. This could be tricky. Let me call one of my peasants just in case. And they should be fine, right? Yeah, we'll team up on the other guy there. I just did this to be safe because I don't want two of those guys teaming up on my swordsman and somehow beating them for some weird reason. Your scouts have discovered the Chicken Devil's Altar. So, this is a really interesting part of the game. If we talk to this guy here, deal with the Chicken Devil. You have a couple of options. You could deal with him for transformation. Chicken Devil will give uh, gives you scroll of transformation, but he will take your soul in exchange. All units in the enemy's army turn into a zombie chickens. Scroll can be used once. So, yeah, you heard correctly. You could turn your enemies into zombie chickens with this, but apparently he will apparently take your soul at some point in the game. I'm not sure when that happens. I have survived up to 35 years in the game before I died, and I never lost my soul. The one that I did was this one, however. Killing. Chicken Devil will kill a random enemy unit before each battle starts, but the Devil will take your soul later. That's the one that I went with, and it helped immensely with the fights, but... I'm not sure what it means that he'll take my soul. Like, do you literally die at the end? So, like, what's the point of doing the deal? And you could also banish the devil. I haven't done that one yet. I'm going to pick this one here because it's the one I'm used to doing already. But uh, I'm not sure what it means by him taking my soul. I guess, you know, at some point I die randomly. I hope it's not before the 50 years, though. 
So that's done here. We can now hire our archer. So now we have a really, really good range unit over here available to us. We have 680 gold. Um, I think what we do here is get yet another peasant. And we're at 280 now. We end our year. As you saw, our fight was instantly done because the, the chicken devil will kill one enemy unit every single fight. So this is literally one attacker. He dies instantly. Unless it doesn't apply, though, if you fight like a, a quote-unquote like boss or special event enemy, though. It's only for like random skirmishes. Okay, so we're at 780 now. Let's see about constructing a building here, and what I would like to do is get some knights available. We need 800 gold for that, huh? Mm, let's see, how can we increase our money? Uh, the Forester's Hut will indeed give me 50 gold per year as well, and one more food. So let's actually get two of these if we can. 350? Yeah, so we'll get two of these. So now, the Forester's Hut will also bring in gold for us as well, so we're making 600 per year now. And it also gives a couple of extra spots in the colony. And that's good. We'll end our year here. Then was found Zombie Chicken's Graveyard. Scouting. Um, so over here we have a random special event. These are going to be random every single run. On my first run around, I think I ran into like... Um, I don't think it was a unicorn. It was like a random fight. But it was like a unicorn, I think. Uh, here we have 12 Zombie Chickens. And the reward for doing this is going to be plus 2 food. And you can do these whenever you're ready, mind you. You don't have to do it right now. I have never fought a zombie chicken before, so I'm a bit worried, especially because we only have, like, two for real fighters. So I'm going to hold off on that one until later. Uh, we're almost about to get another archer, though, which is actually pretty swell. Let's also get another peasant for working here, and that's about it. Let's end our year here. And now, you saw that? We, we automatically killed a swordsman, but now the fights are getting more tougher, obviously. So we got to keep an eye out for that. So that's done. We're up to a thousand gold now. Let's go ahead and hire another archer. And since we have a thousand gold, I think we pick up yet another swordsman. And then the last one that we have available, we'll do another peasant over here. End our year. Nothing happened. Okay, cool. So now we need more room for expansion. So I think we have to get another chicken farm for now. 525, we do that one. End our year. Automatically killed a swordsman, but now we're dealing with two of them. But as you can see, we have two sorties and also two archers, so we should be fine. Let's go ahead and fight this one out. Archers should take care of them even before we get there. There you go. We got 30 points of fate as well. All right, pretty good, pretty good. I'm trying to get the knight unlocked so we can turn into some paladins, but that does require a lot of fate to turn them into paladins as well. So let's hire the la oh yeah, let's hire the other archer. Now we have three archers instead. We have a thousand gold. We could kind of um. Ease up on the swordsman for now that we have three archers here. So let's go to construct building. And we want to start saving up. Well, actually, we need to open up the knights first. So let's open up the knights here. They're going to be like stronger variety of the swordsmen. So essentially, the knights have 40 HP, 7 to 9 damage, courage 9. Swordmen have 30 HP, 5 to 6 damage, and courage 7. I really can't tell you what courage does. I don't think I've really noticed. I'm not sure what it does, honestly. I'd like to tell you I wish I knew, but I, I really haven't. I just know that. Stronger units have more courage, if that means anything, so... Maybe they run away in combat. I've never seen that happen, though. Alright, so, let's see. There's really not much else we can do this turn, so I think we just go ahead and end our year. 965 gold came in, huh? Let's see. Let's pick up maybe... Two more of you, so we have more gold coming in. End this year. One dude was automatically killed. Let's go into the fight now. <laughs> All right, I think we should be able to probably take on the um, the zombie chickens with this layout. Let me just pick up with the extra gold that we have in night, because we're going to need to turn this line into a paladin at some point. So now we have a really good fighter here. Let's go over to scouting, and I think now we do the, the zombie chickens graveyard. Mind you, we have not proceeded down either of these paths, because you have to clear this one before you continue onwards here. And these will give you, like as I mentioned, special buffs. And they also give you like a quote-unquote level up for the colony. Um, uh, you'll see this right now. I think, assuming we win this fight, I think we should, but... Zombie chickens, oh yeah, they are they have a lot of courage, oddly enough, but they have low HP and low damage potential. I don't think we need uh, to call militia, man, even though we're outnumbered. Let's fight this one like this. Archers, please. Okay, if you, if you guys lose to chickens, I'm gonna be really upset with you right now. <laughs> okay, we brought the zombie chickens down, alright, the battle's over. And now we got plus two food for the colony. Or the, yeah, I guess the colony. Whatever the hell you want to call it. 
And that's done. And soon enough, we'll probably get an extra um, colony bonus coming in soon. So that's done. Let's go ahead over here and end the year. Now we're dealing with Sorty, an archer of their own, and a militiaman. We should be fine. We obviously outnumber them. I'd prefer if that knight got into the front, though. Sorty, don't die. Okay. That was very close. You saw where I meant about the, the AI sometimes being really dumb. Like, the, the, the knight should be up front, not the sorties, but... Okay, over here we have Choose a New Belief. And this is what I meant about the eventual, like, colony buff completely. So, here you get to pick a random, I guess, path that you want to take. Honestly, um, I'm not sure if any of them have, like, a benefit over the other one. I mean, some of them are more comet-oriented, some of them more just, like, colony growth-oriented, some of them are more fate-oriented, stuff like that. Uh, Legends of the Miners. Peasants mine 10% more gold each year. So that would be more of a gold one. I actually went down this one, I think. Yeah, I went down this one, and I think also I grabbed Pantheon of the Fat Chickens. So this one apparently gives you, at the beginning of the battle, two random units get... Oh yeah, so with this one, two random units in your party get an extra 20 HP in combat. And it's going to be really random, sometimes it's really beneficial if it's like a, a sortie or a knight. But if it's like an archer that's really in the back, not really too useful. So it's just random. Um, let's go with... This will give you two instant swordsmen to join the party. Eh... The cost of higher units decreases by 50 gold. Three forester huts appear for free. This one might be good because it gives us more money too if I'm right. So let's go with the... This will give us um, 200 woods per year for lumber mills. And then this would make it so we get the druids unlocked fast too. That could be useful. Actually, let's go with the Legends of the Forest for this time around. I've never done this one before, but it seems pretty interesting. So now we have that one. And we... Oh my god. We have 10 more available now because we got the extra Forester Huts for free right now. Ho <laughs> ho um, And we are, we're up to 520 wood. Can I unlock the Druid's Oak? Oh, we're so close. We're going to actually unlock the Druid's Oak really, really soon. Alright, that's cool. So, that's going to be a really strong unit, mind you. Which can turn into a Tiger. I know, you heard me right. It turns into a Tiger. Um, the problem is, it'll make it really strong, but after the fight, it runs off. You don't get it back. So, it's kind of like one of those things where you feel you're about to lose a fight. Turn into a tiger, and you might have a better chance of success, but you will lose the unit completely. Um, alrighty, well... Lumber Mill... Eh, would get us closer to the... Eh, I think a second Lumber Mill is not a bad idea. Because right now, we are... The more wood we have, we could also increase our archer count. You know what, let's get the Lumber Mill. So we'll do that. And now we end our year here. <laughs> <laughs> Two swordsmen? Come on, man. You got no chance of winning here. One of you died instantly, too. Alrighty. Now, let's find out if we can probably... 3,000 gold for the monastery, which is my paladins. Okay. And we have enough now to get another archer. So we'll go ahead and unlock... Well, do you guys want to see the druid? Let's show you the druid first. So the druid's now been unlocked, and now to actually hire the druid, you can only hire one druid per oak, mind you, because they're very strong, so it limits you. Uh, we need 500 gold, which next year will actually unlock the druid. Very useful. And you know what? Let's actually unlock the church now, so we can start building towards the paladin as well. And that'll be it for us. End our turn. All right. We have enough now for the druid. So we're going to hire you. Construct building. Um, this requires 3,000 gold, which we're way off from still. Allows Paladin training. And gives 100 fate per year. So we're still off by like maybe two years, I would say. Uh, let me hire another peasant for now. And might as well... Well, we can't hire you, huh? I don't think I need the swordsman. For now. Let's just end the year. Alright, so now we're dealing with three of them. One of them automatically went down. And now you saw the... Yeah, you saw the droid right there sending those like little orbs of shit. Yeah, those are awesome. Okay, so I think two more years and we unlock the the Paladin class just about. So, mm, let's see. Let me get, oh, we need one more year for this one. Huh? I want to get a couple of more archers, so I think we just skip this year because we're saving money. And now we go over to construct building, shooting ground for more archers, and now we'll use, oh, can we do it? No, we need 500 wood for the archer. So next year we'll get the Paladins. Oh, now they have knights and they have four sorties. So now they're getting a bit more difficult. Archer, stay in the back, please. We might lose a, a sortie right now. Yep, we lost a sortie. Damn. 
That's what I meant about the AI being really dumb. Like, they should have focused on the knight, but they went after the shit unit. So we lost the swordsman, but luckily it was a swordsman and not a knight. Um, and over here now, we have another new belief to select from. I do want to get this one for more druids, so let me go ahead and pick up Lumberjack Masters. And now we also have enough money for the monastery. And now with 300 um, fate, we we'll should be able to turn a knight into a paladin, so we have to wait roughly two years to unlock that. And I think we're almost out of time, guys, so I'm going to unlock the paladin, and then I'll show you a combat with the paladin, and then we'll wrap it up here. Because it's a one-shot, but I hope you guys have enjoyed it so far. It's a really fun game. I think it's a like really fun game just for small little runs because we're up to year 21. And it gets progressively more difficult. Around year 25 or 30, that is when you'll see the really big ramp up in difficulty. And you're kind of like, holy shit, how do I survive? Right now it's been kind of like clear sailing. But early game is very important for you to survive late game indeed. Um, well, we can hire more. Well, actually, wait, wait, wait. We need 3,000 wood for another um, druid. I really want another druid. I really, really want that. Let's see, how about... How about we do... 2,500 gold? Oh, we got enough for that. Let me do two more archers for now. Oh, we need resources? Oh, 700, yeah, okay. So, end this year. Next year, we'll get the paladin. Speaking of which, let's actually open up an extra knight, because one of the knights will be turned into a paladin. And then we want the extra archer as well. And we're at 720. Let's end our year here. Alrighty. We have three sorties and an archer. We should be fine. Oh! We lost the sortie, though. Those archers did work in that sortie. Yeah, we lost the swordsman. And now we have enough fade for a paladin. So now we hire you. One of our knights turned into a paladin. And the paladins could drop, like, heels around the, the fighting... Um, map. It seems like really random, but it happens on occasion. Um, okay. And now we could also hire another archer. I'm actually save the wood for... <laughs> I'm gonna save that for, um, another druid, because we need 3,000 for another druid. So I think for now what we do is maybe more peasants would be useful, too. Let's actually do a town hall. And that'll actually increase our peasant count to 20. And end our year here. That's an easy fight. Very easy fight. And there's a paladin right there. We didn't see any heals because we didn't take any damage, but they normally would heal. Um, let me hire a couple more of you guys. And 2300. Alright, we're almost... Next year should be the extra druid, I'm gonna say. Oh, luckily we killed the knight instantly. So that's gonna be an easy fight. Cool. New belief. What is this one? The forest heals injured units up to 30 life can be healed. Ooh. Why not? We found a den, beast, den, lost mine. And here's where we'll wrap it up, guys. Let me find out what this one's about. Oh, unicorn. So this fight over here involves two minotaurs, two archers, and two swordsmen. The minotaurs are very strong. They're basically almost as strong as a unicorn. So this is the easier fight. And apparently, um... Oh, how about that? I just realized that. So the reward for the unicorn fight is that one tiger can stay in the army. Meaning, one of your druids, if you turn into a tiger, it actually remains in the army. Hey! Well, I think we should do it after the reward, right? So that's a unicorn down here. A lot of HP, a lot of damage, and they could also knock enemies back. But the archer should do a good number on that. Oh, yeah. You saw I knocked back my paladin. 200 points. One tiger can stay in the army. So, let's see. Before we wrap up, let me go ahead and show a fight where we turn into the tiger. Because, got you know, it's like the whole Ronnie James deal throwback here. Um, let's do it with this mission here. Why not? This is something I usually wait for later because of the Minotaurs, they scare me a bit. But let's go ahead and turn... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait a second, wait a second. Uh, let me do... Extra Archer and Extra Knight, just in case. And let's do that one. Let's go ahead and turn that Druid into a Tiger. <laughs> now a Tiger. And what what's really interesting, it turns into more into a melee fighter, which... I don't know, I, I like the, the Druid just hanging out in the back and, like, sniping fools, but... Whatever. We lost a knight just now, and we're about to lose that tiger, too. Yeah, see, this is the reason why this fight I normally wait till much later.
because those Minotaurs are very tough, and then the um, archers back here basically just take pot shots at you over and over. So that's the reason why I normally wait for this fight even later. I just wanted to show off the tiger thing over here, but we did lose doing that, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, I've gotten up to 35 years, and then the game just completely throws the entire militia of everything uh, of shit on me, which is um pretty um, overwhelming to see. But there you guys have it, 50 years, really fun game. I'll have the information for the game down below if you want to check it out for yourself. I will catch you next time.